Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Chris over at American Muscle, and I'm here with Mike Wilson from Bama Custom Tuning at American Muscle. Hey, guys. So we wanted to, uh, I guess we wanted to go over some 2011 V6 stuff with you. Um, I know there's been a lot of people waiting, and I know you've been getting a lot of calls about right. uh, the 2011 V6 as far as for uh, horsepower and torque numbers with uh, JLT and CNL cold air intakes or uh, 93 tunes. 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just tunes, so. Um, what we have here on the screen is our 2011 V6 automatic. Uh, it's equipped with 273 gears. Um, and for all the stock, uh, no cold air, no tune dyno runs, they were done with the uh, car locked in third gear and the converter locked. And no knock sensor retard, but the advance was left on so the computer could act just like it does on the street um, with no possibility of you know sensing false knock or whatever before the timing gets pulled out. So all the runs can be kept consistent. Yeah. So basically, the the third gear lock was a lot of that was because our our tires weren't rated to go um, any faster. It's a completely stock car out of the dealership, and you know the tires aren't meant to go 150, 160 miles an hour on the dyno. Uh, some shops will do it. Uh, some shops won't. We don't really uh, care in third gear since they're all going to be in third gear. There's not going to be any difference in the results. Uh, it'll be consistent across the board. And like he said, the knock sensors um, are very very touchy. From the factory, so these cars will retard timing uh, for just about any noise. Uh, they're very, very sensitive. So we decided to keep things fair. Uh, we wouldn't allow the car to pull timing, uh, which is something we will never send out to a customer. However, for testing for us um, internally, uh, we found this to be the best way to keep everything fair from run to run. So um, that way, the advance is left on. If you're running a premium fuel like 93 octane, like we did, it'll advance timing. Uh, and allow the car to pick up some horsepower. However, it won't uh, allow it to pull timing like it would in stock form. Um, so, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll get right into it. This is 87 octane. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, the 2011 V6 automatic, um, like the calibration changes have said. Uh, stock, no tuning. Um, the car made 252 horsepower and 247 reward foot pounds of torque. Um, the grab is kind of choppy. Um, this is the exact same way you pick the car from the dealership off the showroom floor with 87 octane. Um, so that's the number that we got in our car locked in third gear as opposed to fourth or fifth. I guess we can show, um, we'll throw on um, over top of this run, the blue run here is the 87. Um, we're going to throw on a um, 93 octane factory uh, calibration. So you can see this is what would happen if you just put 93 octane over the same exact tune that we just went over. Um, ignoring everything below 3,000 RPM is probably a good idea because yeah, that's, that was when we started this tip in. Um, a lot of that's converter lock or yeah. wheel slip or you know internal stuff. So uh, everything that we're doing, we're going to be looking from here and up basically. Um, so I guess do you want to explain to them? I mean, you can see how there was more timing obviously and, and uh, picked up. What, what do we got here? We got something like seven, seven, horsepower, seven horsepower and six, six foot pounds of torque. torque. Um, just put 93 octane on the car. The car does pick up power because the knock sensors do advance the timing. Um, lost a little bit down low. That could have been because it was different days um, on these two different tunes. They were uh, one day after the next, but we had to drain the fuel out, put 93 in, and so on and so forth. But uh, put 93 octane in the in the car with no tune changes does pick up horsepower and torque mainly above 4,500. Yeah. So anywhere at wide open throttle when you're uh, between shifts, it'll still pick up power. And I believe these are the only uh, runs, uh, actually the this 87 octane run, it's the only run that was a different day. Everything else was done same yeah, day, same, same dyno, day within, you know, a couple hours of each same other. fuel. This one was just because we had to go from 87 octane to 93 octane that we, uh, you know, obviously we had to, to get rid of that fuel properly. So. Um, so yeah, it looks like, I mean, I don't know, it looks like for me as a car owner, I'd, I'd run some premium fuel in there. There's definitely a, a noticeable difference from 4,500 and up, um, and I'm sure that, you know, this stuff, once it gets a chance to adapt, um, it'll have about the same amount of gains yeah, it'll down all clear here. up there. Cool. So the first thing we'll do is we'll jump, let's get rid of the 87 octane run, uh, because everything we did from here on out is going to be with 93 octane premium fuel. It's going to hold true whether you're running 91 octane fuel or whether you're running 87 octane fuel. Um, but to keep everything easy, we're going to just show 93 only results here. Um, so JLT uh, with no tune, just adding the JLT intake. Let's take a look at that. 
and you can see here from the uh, graph, even down low, the car picks up as much as you know 17, 18 foot pounds of torque and 10 to 11 horsepower, um, pretty much across the board. Uh, this is the exact same calibration, no tune required intake, um, no knock sensor retard, but the advance is still left on, just like the stock uh, 93 no tune. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, uh, for for any you know. Um, Owner looking just to bolt something on and, and pick up a good amount of power. I think this is definitely a, a really a really good modification. I Absolutely. I mean, it bolted on within probably ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah. Uh, assuming you have the right tools, but I mean, it went right on just as it said, and it picked up the power. So I mean, it's definitely good bang for the buck. The other thing that's kind of cool here is the air fuel ratio. Um, now, uh, just a disclaimer here: we were reading from the tailpipe, so it's going to be about a quarter to a half a point uh, leaner than it really is. Um, before the cats, so where we're looking here, 13.1, 13.2, some spots we're looking as much as 13.4, um, those numbers will really be more like 12.6 to 12.9 before yeah, the cats. The, the car, the all the 2011 uh, Mustangs, they have uh, twin NTK wide bands uh, pre-cat, so it's monitoring the air fuel ratio before the catalytic converter, which is the proper way you really want to measure air fuel, um, especially when calibrating the car. Yeah. Um, and they were all fine. It was just this particular reading that you're seeing on the screen is using the, uh, the wide band from the dyno and not the car's wide band. Right. So uh, it's going to be a little bit more lean. But the nice thing about it is it shows that the factory uh, air fuel ratio and the air fuel ratio of the JLT are overlaid. I mean, pretty much. But then one to two percent. Yeah. So yeah there's, there is no tune required with these engines. That's kind of cool to see that a manufacturer claims that. You don't have to touch the tune, and in reality, you didn't have to touch the tune. You know, that's uh, the previous years, the 05 to 10s, most of the no tune intakes uh, either would run lean or, you know, throw a code um, or very up many, uh, much power to take <laughs> Right, right. So, I mean, it's very, very few of them actually perform the way that they were supposed to, and this is definitely an example of an intake that says, hey, you don't need to tune your car, and, uh, and you don't. Um, so, let's go ahead and take a look at the. Uh, the CNL intake since we were, um, you know, we had the car up in the dyno and all, we also decided to take the CNL intake and, um, you know, test that one as well um, because before we had some uh, issues with trying to, to uh, test it and we were finally able to get some good results out of it. We bolted the thing back on, we literally took the JLT off um, and we put the, uh, the uh, CNL on um, and this is what we, what we had. And again, this is a no tune required intake, just as the manufacturer claims, and it does the same thing. Uh, picks up horsepower and torque, what they claim, and there is no tune required, because so the air fuel ratio does stay the same. And if we take a look at that, just to verify, um, you can see again the air fuel ratio is very, 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 very close across the board. Um, again, one to two percent, sometimes three percent, but uh, nothing to be worried about. It still stays within safe parameters. As Chris said earlier, we are measuring on the dyno at the tailpipe, so this is about a quarter to a half point leaner than what you would see at the uh, free Yeah, pad. yeah. And this, I mean, this is this is awesome right here. This is all very usable torque too. You know, Absolutely. you're talking about 3,500 and down. You're picking up 13 foot pounds of torque at the ground. You know, that's about 15, 16 at the flywheel. That's that's uh, that's really awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's where most people drive their car is below you know 3,500, 4,000 RPM, which is where <coughs> the power you know, really picks up. Let's take a look at um. With a stock airbox and uh, and Bama tune. Yeah, this is our '93 street tune that we're putting on top of here. So this is no airbox at all, other than the stock uh, panel filter and all that. It's uh, a completely bone stock car, actually. Um, so other than that, we just put our Bama. What is this '93 street? Yeah, '93 street tune. '93. So this isn't even our, our most powerful tune. No, not at all. As you can see down low, um, the street tune is targeted, you know, below 3,000, 3,500 RPM. Uh, the torque really jumps up. Um, get a peak right about here. Uh, yeah, you're looking like 16 foot pounds of yeah, torque, 16, 17 foot pounds of torque. I think there's some areas you get right close to 20. Um, like I said, it picks up tons of torque down low in the horsepower. Yeah, 12, um, 12 horsepower is really good. Yeah, for just the tune. Uh, this is just the tune by itself, no cold air kit or anything. Um, the, I guess the next thing to note would be look at how smooth the graph is. Um, with a custom tune compared to the stock graph. Right. Uh, now, granted, the, the dyno is showing uh, smoothing on five, but if we take the smoothing off, 
you can still see how smooth the uh, Bama race or street tune is compared to the stock tune. So you can see this is with smoothing at zero. Um, it's at, all these numbers are SA corrected, by the way, which is uh, what the Society of Automotive Engineers deems as you know your rear wheel uh, horsepower and torque numbers uh, with their correction factors for you know climate and altitude and all that good stuff. So. Um, you can see smoothing is at zero here now as opposed to five, which is a pretty standard for, you know, dyno graphs. SAE at smoothing five on a dyno jet's kind of like the industry standard, quote unquote. Um, so we, we literally have um, smoothing off and you can see the stock run, there's a lot of fluctuation there. On our run, there's a lot less. There's definitely a lot less. Um, all this stuff's to be expected top end a little bit, um, but it's kind of cool to see that it's smoother. And, uh, you know, that could be... Uh, uh, mixture of, you know, variable cam, uh, you know, spark advance, fueling, and how we do things, but uh, it's probably something you're going to feel, um, for sure. Absolutely. It's a big gain of torque and horsepower down low. Yeah, yeah. So this is cool. This is awesome to see that, you know, you can make good power with a, you know, a JLT intake without, you know, having to, to tune the car if you don't want to. You and can also... You tune on by itself and you can get the same type of results. You, you get the same type of results, yeah. So that's really cool. That's awesome. So let's take a look at what happens when you actually take the JLT uh, intake and the Bama custom tune. Um, you know, you're at, in this spot, you're at 19 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, so you can see that the, the common misconception is that, okay, so we gain 15 foot-pounds of torque and 15 horsepower with the JLT intake. I gain 15 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds of torque with a, just a tune. You add them together and you get 30. And this shows us otherwise. Yeah, that's not the case at all. Um, the big thing you're going to see with a tune also, um, as you saw with the previous tune with No Cold Air Kit, um, you still pick up your throttle response and the automatic transmissions, the shift pressures, the points, the converter lock, uh, speed limiter, rev limiter, throttle response, responses. everything. It's all adjusted. So you still get the same benefit when you combine it with a cold air kit. Um, but you see, when you combine the two, you don't get the 25, 30 like you would, like some people think you would get when you put a cold air kit and a tune together. That one picks up 15, the other one picks up 15, 14, whatever, and they get 30. That's not the way it works. You can see here, when you put the cold air kit and a tune together, you still get the smoothness of the tune, and you still get the power of the cold air kit when they're both combined. And I mean, all other things equal, this is, I didn't realize, this is our, our street tune. So this is really, I mean, probably a couple horsepower shy of what it should be. Our, our race tune by far is going to make more horsepower in the mid to top end. Yeah, the mid to top end will be a lot higher. The torque down low may be a little less because the fuel is not as aggressive down low. Um, but we do get quite more aggressive on the variable cam timing and the spark advance up top. Yeah, our street tune is responsible for all this this torque that you're, you're seeing right here. This is definitely, um, you know, uh, part of our, our calibration. Um, but like he said, you know, you're going to pick up here uh, in the top end with our race tune. So it's kind of, I mean, it's what, it's different, you know, driving styles and different, right. you know, uh, preferences for, for people and, and how they're going to be driving their car. A lot of people spend a lot of time here uh, between 3,000 3,500 RPM. Some people like uh, uh, like myself, they're a little more spirited drivers that want to be up in the, the upper RPMs all the time and they might take better advantage of the, of the race tune every day. Right. So, yeah, so it looks like, I mean, other than uh, other than that, I think we uh, covered everything. It looks like that we're really seeing good gains out of both. Um, Absolutely. So, if anybody has any questions about this stuff, you know, you can feel free to give Bama a call or, or shoot us over a message uh, uh, on on the forums here. Uh, but we just wanted to get these results out there and, and have them available so that people see that you know there's definitely uh, a ton to be had with a uh, with a um, aftermarket calibration and aftermarket custom tune. I just wanted to show one more thing real quick here. I, I know that you like seeing this too, is the uh, the stock 87 octane uh, compared to the 93 octane is, is ridiculous, the uh, difference here, uh, mid-range. And like we talked about before, um, how the car made a tiny bit more power with 87 down low. Um, after the knock sensors pick that up a couple times, that's going to drop too, and this is going to be a really impressive graph. Right. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, all right, uh, I guess that's about all for that. We're going to be doing some more testing, I assume, with the... Oh, yeah, there's always research <coughs> development going on. New cars are going on and off the dyno uh, every single day. So um, if we get more time, we'll put this car back up on there. We'll see if we can find some more horsepower and torque. And um, once we have updates, uh, Chris will get them all released to everybody and 
able to have a better ten. I'm sure everybody's watching, um, and I know that we're doing some stuff with our with our 2011 GT. So hopefully we'll be able to get this thing back to the track when the weather clears up here. Absolutely, that's the plan. Is get the GT and the V6 and some of the other cars in our um, stable here to uh, get them back to the track and see what kind of numbers that this uh, horsepower and torque put down. Anything you can leak to us? Um, more nitrous on the GT. <laughs> um, and there's some other things that'll be going on, but. Uh, yeah, we're uh, looking to knock that 1094 at 125, 127 down uh, closer to a single digit than what we had before. So we'll see what happens this season. Uh, we're all excited about it. we got a lot in store for the GT as well as the V6. I know the V6 went 1373 at, uh, I forget, 101 or something. 101, 102, yeah. I can't remember exactly. So, yeah. And that was with stock, airbox, 87 octane, nothing else done to it? Yeah. And, um, Went 14.2 with no tune. With nothing done. Yeah, and then just to put the 87 octane tune in there, and it went 13.9 uh, or just. So I assume we're going to get it back with a uh, JLT and 93 and see what we do with uh, Yeah, let me see other things thrown at the car. Don't know exactly. We have a game plan, just got to decide what order and uh, what all we're going to put on there. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some modifications done to both of these cars in the future. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll have that in the next couple months then. Yes, sir. All right. If anybody has any questions, anywhere to find us, we appreciate it. Thank you.